Uh, hello, my name is Marjan Jaryani. I'm an anesthesiologist at Toronto General Hospital. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here and present this case to you, non-cardiac surgery in adult congenital heart disease patient. Regarding objectives of this talk, increasing number of adult congenital heart disease patients present for non-cardiac surgery. Anesthesiologists in any hospital setting could become responsible for providing care to this population of patients. We are going to review a case and go through preoperative and intraoperative decision making with emphasis on the role of echocardiography. We will review the available guidelines on how to decide on severity of a cardiac lesion and following that, what are the implications of the severity of a cardiac lesion. We are going to use this information to elaborate on what setting the procedure can be performed and what level of preoperative care is appropriate for a particular patient. Then we review the post-procedural decision-making and overall at the end, I'm hoping that we could form a general approach to adult congenital heart disease patient for non-cardiac surgery and decision-making related to that. Our case, a 20-year-old male presenting for cholecystectomy. Uh, he has symptoms of abdominal pain on daily basis. He was investigated and was found to have gallstones. Um, his history is remarkable for congenital heart disease. He had oxygenation issues uh, at birth. Uh, he was investigated and was diagnosed with Epstein anomaly of tricuspid valve and also an, an AST. He underwent device closure of atrial septal defect 12 years ago with Amplatzer device. Um, he is left with uh, moderate to severe tricuspid valve regurgitation. He has normal neurodevelopment and no other comorbidities. When we saw him for preoperative assessment, he was a functional class 2. Um, not very active, but denied any cardiorespiratory symptoms. He did not have any history of previous episodes of heart failure or hospitalization for this matter. Um, he was at no distress at rest and did not have any abdominal pain um, during the clinic visit. His rumor saturation was 96%. He's, uh, he was a smaller person with a height of 147 centimeter and his weight was 52.5 kilos. He had normal airway and there was no signs of right-sided heart failure in him when we saw him. Our patient was on the regular follow-up by congenital cardiology clinic. He had yearly visits with clinical exam, CPS study, and transthoracic echo. He had a recent visit with the clinic and overall their assessment indicated that he was in a stable condition with no need for any intervention. We are going to review some of the transthoracic images which were done preoperatively in this patient. As you see here, there is significant apical displacement of a septal leaflet of tricuspid valve. It is measured about six centimeter here and marked by red arrows. There is also um, dilatation of atrialized portion of right ventricle, um, which is anatomical RV, but not the functional right ventricle. Uh, this, e this area is marked by a green line here. Uh, and also there is dilatation of um, true tricuspid valve annulus, which is marked by yellow line here. Um, there are other abnormalities and they are uh, extensively explained, but in uh, a summary, there could be uh, apical displacement of a posterior leaflet and anterior leaflet as well. There is adherence of septal and posterior leaflet to the underlying myocardium. Uh, the Epstein anomaly involves not only tricuspid valve, but also right ventricle, uh, ventricle as well. He 
Here uh, you see severe dilatation of anatomical right ventricle. A major part of this is uh, atrialized uh, and uh, is not part of uh, the functional right ventricle. Functional right ventricle is actually a smaller cavity um, and has some degree of uh, dysfunction. There is um, significant tricuspid with valve regurgitation. The assessment preoperatively was moderate to severe uh, tricuspid with valve regurgitation. This is a short axis view of the left ventricle and right ventricle. Uh, patient had um, uh, a small LV cavity size, but preserved systolic function, D-shaped interventricular septum, as you see. RV was severely dilated, but this is not functional right ventricle. Functional RV is small and has mild to moderate dysfunction. There was no evidence of shunt across intraatrial septum and uh, amplatzer device. Regarding decision making, we consider this case to be a semi-elective procedure. So certainly there was time to optimize the patient further if needed. Regarding severity of congenital cardiac lesion, um, I wanted to mention that this is a very important factor in decision making preoperatively and based on the severity of uh, the cardiac lesion, we can decide on the level of preoperative care and the hospital setting that the procedure needs to be performed at. Also, we had to decide on performing uh, open versus laparoscopic technique. Uh, considering benefits of laparoscopic technique in post-operative recovery, we decided on uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy with low threshold to convert to open if hemodynamic instability uh, occurred. A quick discussion on how to decide on severity of a congenital cardiac lesion based on 2018 guidelines. This is done according to the anatomy of the lesion and physiological state. This is different from previous guidelines published in 2008. Um, and uh, in that guideline, the severity of lesion was mostly decided based on complexity of the anatomy. Regarding anatomy of congenital heart disease uh, lesion, um, this could be simple, moderate, or complex. Example of a simple lesion is like an isolated ASD or repaired ASD with no chamber, chamber enlargement. Example, uh, examples of complex lesion uh, are fontan cell curation, Eisenmenger, and cyanotic heart disease, and anything in between um, is the moderate um, lesion. So Epstein anomaly falls into this category, but it is important to uh, mention here that, uh, the, that in Epstein, disease spectrum has a wide range and can be mild, moderate, or severe. Regarding physiological stage, uh, this is based on several factors that are proven to correlate with outcome, and they include aortic dilatation, arrhythmias, concomitant valvular heart disease, end organ dysfunction, exercise capacity, hypoxia, cyanosis, and uh, New York Heart Association functional class. So we have physiological stage from A to, to D, with A being functional class one, no hemodynamic sequela, no arrhythmia, normal exercise capacity, no organ dysfunction, normal diameter of the aorta. Um, and D being functional class four with refractory arrhythmias, severe hypoxemia, severe pulmonary hypertension, etc. To summarize, we have a semi-elective procedure, laparoscopic cholecystectomy, uh, which is a moderate risk surgery in a patient which, with congenital heart disease, which is Epstein anomaly. Uh, this is at least moderate complexity uh, of uh, anatomical classification and class C 
for physiological uh, stage. Looking at 2018 guidelines regarding management of this patient, they recommend optimization before surgery and close observation and monitoring following the procedure, and also performing the procedure in hospital setting in consultation with experts in adult congenital heart disease if possible. Uh, patient was accepted for the procedure. There was no indication for any optimization preoperatively. Following induction of uh, general anesthesia and intubation of trachea, there was a significant instability with uh, hypotension and hypoxia. Boluses of inotropes and pressors uh, were needed. No chest compression was performed. Um, patient was resuscitated and uh, a TEE was requested. This is a four chamber view and uh, at times you see the aortic valve here, so it may be close to five chamber view. We see the amplaster device here. There is um, apical displacement of septal leaflet of tricuspid valve, uh, and it is very significant. We see um, the severe dilatation of anatomical right ventricle. A major part of this is atrialized right ventricle and does not participate in RV volume or RV systolic function. Uh, there is bowing of interventricular septum toward the left ventricular outflow tract uh, in systole, and this is secondary to dilatation of atrialized portion of uh, right ventricle, and at times could cause um, LVOT gradient, but this was not the case in this patient. The initial imaging did show uh, the very abnormal uh, tricuspid valve as uh, was expected based on Epstein anomaly um, and um, significant amount of tricuspid valve regurgitation as you see uh, in this image. Further imaging of tricuspid valve uh, confirms presence of severe TR. Uh, we see the RVOT portion of um, right ventricle here, uh, and that quite likely has reduced contractility. Um, this is following administration of uh, inotropes and pressors, and there was some recovery in hemodynamics at this stage. Considering that there was hypoxia, uh, the TE team was uh, looking for any possible shunt. Um, um, so color imaging of uh, intraatrial septum and uh, device closure of previous AST was done. Um, and this uh, was uh, suspicious for presence of right to left shunt. So we performed a saline contrast study, and this was a strongly positive. There was early appearance of significant amount of contrast in the left atrium. So from this image, we concluded that there must be a communication in the inferior part of amplaster device between the right atrium and the left atrium. This image uh, shows a severely tethered uh, posterior leaflet of tricuspid valve and um, significant uh, degree of uh, tricuspid valve regurgitation. Uh, looking at a uh, short axis uh, view of LV and RV in transgastric view, uh, massively dilated uh, anatomical RV. Um, this is not functional RV, and most of uh, 
very dilated anatomical uh, right ventricle is atrialized and functional RV is a small and at least moderately hypokinetic and LV cavity was a small and uh, uh, function was assessed as mildly reduced. Based on these uh, TEE images, it was suggested that hypotension secondary to uh, vasodilatation following induction of general anesthetic and also increase in pulmonary vascular resistance uh, secondary to positive pressure ventilation and PEEP uh, caused the um, uh, relative increase in uh, right atrial pressure compared to left atrial pressure and increase in uh, right to left shunt through previously undiagnosed intraatrial sept septal defect and then uh, hypoxia uh, as a result. Um, Interventions uh, such as uh, administration of ionotropes and pressors uh, would uh, improve uh, systemic vascular resistance and would reduce the shunt and uh, overall help the recovery of um, hemodynamics. The team decided on canceling the surgery. A patient was uh, stable on uh, pressors. She was uneventfully extubated in ICU and was referred back to cardiology for further investigations and interventions. Following this, the uh, patient uh, had a couple of investigations, including a transthoracic echo. Um, they performed a saline contrast study without Valsalva, which was positive with early appearance of uh, contrast in the left atrium. So uh, this uh, showed that there was a right to left shunt. Um, the rest of the exam was unchanged. Um, LV function, RV function, uh, was as before, and there was moderate to severe TR, which was unchanged uh, from preoperative exam. Patient also had um, left and right heart cat. There was no evidence of significant left to right shunting. There was evidence of a small residual leak at the inferior aspect of the ASD device. Um, she had normal right-sided cardiac and pulmonary pressure, and there was normal left-sided filling pressures as well. Uh, so there was no obvious indication for device closure of atrial septal defect. Following these investigations, we accepted the patient for surgery again we agreed to try laparoscopic technique with low intra-abdominal pressure and um, low threshold to convert to open technique if laparoscopy is not tolerated. We thought the anesthetic care should focus on maintenance of SVR and use of pressors as needed. Also, use of inotropic support as indicated, and this could be guided by TEE, which could be started immediately following intubation of trachea. Um, we also recommended uh, maintenance of low ventilatory pressures as much as uh, possible. Currently, the patient is under observation and has not um, agreed uh, to go ahead with the procedure yet. Thank you very much for your attention.